Hello, my name is Sebastian Schneeweiss and I'm a pharmacoepidemiologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, a major training center in pharmacoepidemiology and database analytics. I'm also a professor of medicine and epidemiology at Harvard Medical School. In order to put the paper into context, it is important to understand that we're working with healthcare databases. Uh, these databases are not generated for research purposes, rather they are data are generated by running a healthcare system. These are administrative data that are generated by billing. Uh, these are electronic healthcare records that are there to document healthcare encounters. Uh, and we are working with the longitudinally linked data stream that comes out of these data. Now, this poses several issues that we're trying to overcome. One important issue is that we are not in charge in defining exactly how we measure confounding factors. In fact, likely it is that uh, the exact definition of a confounder is not represented in these secondary databases. So we are working with proxies, variables that can be defined in these codes, ICD codes, CPD procedure codes, uh, that are associated with the underlying constructs that we are interested in. So we are working with proxies. Once you accept the fact that we are working with proxies, we also accept that the more proxies we have, the better it likely is in order to fully capture all confounding these data sources. Now it turns out that um, with these databases, because we have all these ICD codes, procedure codes, you can actually define hundreds, if not thousands, of covariates based on combinations of these codes and temporality of these codes. So if you have an abundance of covariates, uh, and some of them are better proxies, others are not as good proxies for the confounders that we're interested in. So it then becomes a tremendous variable selection problem when you do a multivariate analysis of your data, which is the reason why in our field we really like working uh, with propensity scores because that is a convenient variable reduction methodology. Uh, a whole vector of covariates gets condensed into one single uh, number, the propensity score. For that reason, pharmacoepidemiologists working with large healthcare databases like working with propensity score methodologies because this is a mechanic that is reducing a long vector of covariates into a single number, the propensity score reaching from 0 to 1. Now, uh, this becomes a a tremendous effort in selecting the right variables out of a thousand variables, let's say, down to maybe 50 variables, maybe 100 variables that actually make it into propensity score. Now, theory uh, and simulation studies like the work by Alan Brookhart when he was here uh, and, uh, and others have shown that it is critically important to put all predictors for the outcome into the propensity score model, even if they are weakly or apparently not associated with treatment choice. They should be part of the um, propensity score model, which was really the driving factor for this research that you're reading. Uh, how can we make sure that we enrich uh, the variable vector that goes into propensity score with variables that are correlated empirically, uh, correlated with the outcome of interest. So the high dimensional propensity score is doing exactly that in its basic algorithm, a paper published in 2009 in epidemiology. Uh, and uh, we have now experimented with different ways to enrich the covariate vector with variables that are likely associated with the study outcome based on the empirical data that you work with. It turns out, as a result of this, uh, that uh, there are only minor improvements with all the different uh, methods that we have played with. We have played with 17 different approaches. Uh, uh, minor improvement over the basic high dimensional propensity score algorithm. Uh, what seems promising is uh, to run uh, Bayesian outcome regressions in order to inform which variables should be included in the propensity score model. So I hope you will enjoy reading the paper, and uh, if there are any questions um, remaining, please do not hesitate to contact me. You will find my email on my webpage. Thank you very much.